Mike, with what uh, Ryan's been able to do the last three days, is it? Are you looking at a game time decision? Or yeah, I think so. I mean, we'll we'll keep you updated. He was limited today. That's what the injury report will f reflect here in a little bit. In going through that and you know the whole process, seven extra hours that you normally wouldn't have before kickoff have any bearing at all, or does that decision have to be made before? That? It doesn't have to be made before that. No, the more time that you have to treat and recover and make decisions, the better. How did Elijah do during the course of the practice week? Um, started his return to play. Yeah. Don't anticipate him being brought up. Do not, I'm sorry. No, okay. do not. Is it reasonable to expect more from, from Malik if he winds up being the guy? I don't know what that means. We're just going to try to find a way to win the game. It means uh, hitting open receivers, things like that in the past. Yep, game. trying to improve just like everybody else. You can continue to put it on one guy. I'm going to put it on the entire team. It's, well, one it's my job to make sure. Don't interrupt me. It's my job to make sure that uh, we improve each week and, and Malik and Ben and Derek and Kevin and Jeff are all part of that. How is the week going for Malik as far as practice is concerned? Just the same as it has for everybody else. We're trying to get better as the week goes on and, and try to make sure that Friday's the uh, cleanest day of the week. And I would say that that was the case for everybody. It felt like we got better as the week wore on. If you get to the point in a passing play where the quarterback's able to throw the ball, a pass completion begins with him spotting a receiver and throwing it accurately to him, correct? Is Malik yeah, we need to that? yeah we need to make sure that we uh, when we throw the ball that we, we get open and we protect and that we're able to you know progress through and, and hit hit the guys that are open obviously. Derek mentioned that uh, the Chiefs are really good at run blitzing on their defense. Uh, when when a team is that good, uh, how how tough is it to maybe counter some of those blitzes? Is it more guessing? Is it just trying to? No, we try not to guess, Teresa. We try not to guess. We try to make sure that every play is sound and. Um, you know, I think that's part of the conversation is you want to have, you know, uh, a million plays, but you know, I don't know how realistic that is. You want to make sure that the plays that you run are sound against pressures, run pressures, because if not, then somebody ends up getting hurt. You know, I mean, you're out there and, and you're leaving guys unblocked. And uh, so they do do a nice job. You know, they bring some some pressures. They, they play good technique inside. And, and then when they do pressure, obviously, you know, they're trying to get down downhill and, and build a wall. So, you know, it'll be a good, like every week, it'll be a great challenge. Did, did you learn anything about Kelsey from the time coaching him last year in the Pro Bowl that you didn't know, that you thought was unique? And what has made him such a, a menace in the red zone? No, you wouldn't learn anything about the Pro Bowl, about anybody other than just their personality. And yeah. I know Travis, and he's a fantastic player. He uh, is athletic, he's, he's sudden, he's smart, he's instinctive. Um, you know, he's got great savvy, great understanding of coverages, man, zone, leverage, uh, can, can play physical uh, with, with you know, defenders that are pressed on him and can also, you know, double you up and, 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 and beat you on leverage going inside. Got a big catch radius. Anybody else? Uh, Hooker and uh, Tory Carter. Yeah, Hooker and Tory Carter. Questionable, I guess. Right, you got, we'll get to the injury report here in a few minutes. That's Robbie's job.